Welcome to this unit in which we're going to talk about line drawing. Now, in the previous unit, we talked about uh, vector graphics and bitmap uh, graphics, graphics in general, and we discussed the virtues of uh, vector graphics. And among uh, other things, we decided that we're going to implement uh, three graphics uh, primitives, which are drawing a pixel, you know, a single individual pixel on the screen in a certain uh, location, drawing a line from you know, two points uh, on the screen, and drawing a circle given, uh, given a center and uh, a radius. So in this unit, uh, we will start with a draw pixel as a point of departure because we've already discussed it in the previous unit. And uh, we will learn how to draw lines using a draw pixel and how to draw circles using a draw line. And so uh, let us begin with the uh, draw line. And in order to motivate uh, line drawing, we go back to uh, this figure that we saw in the previous uh, unit. And one nice thing about vector graphics is that uh, because everything is governed by uh, uh, simple algebraic uh, statements, I can, for example, ungroup this uh, 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 bunch of polygons into you know, some of uh, some subsets uh, or sub-images, all of which are uh, drawn using uh, vector graphics. And uh, uh, I will choose arbitrarily the beak to uh, focus on. And I'd like to show you how we can draw this beak. So basically, we can draw it uh, as follows. I draw this line and that line. And uh, I keep on drawing lines, which uh, eventually is going to, uh, are going to constitute the uh, a polygon which uh, uh, implements uh, or uh, realizes this uh, beak. And I intentionally draw it slowly because, you know, I want you to feel the frustration. I want you to say, you know, when are we going to finally get this beak drawn on the screen? Well, here it is. We got it. What I wanted to illustrate to you are two things. First of all, that image drawing is done as a succession of line drawing operations. And second of all, you better do it fast. Because if line drawing is going to be slow, then everything is going to be sluggish. The user is going to be extremely frustrated, we will have no animation, no video, no YouTube, and the world will be much uh, bleaker. So everything depends on the uh, uh, pace in which we can draw these uh, lines, and we want to draw them as quickly as possible. So let's uh, delve into the details of line drawing using this uh, sample uh, grid here. And let me begin with a simplifying assumption. I want to focus only on lines that go northeast. So uh, here's one typical uh, such uh, line. I want to draw the line that goes from x1, y1 to x2, y2. And uh, I want you to notice that uh, it's really impossible to draw such a line. Why? Because the only thing we can do is turn pixels on and off. So in this particular example, you know, I have to turn on this pixel, and uh, this one, and this one, and that one. And notice that I can only approximate the line, right? And uh, in each iteration, I either go right or up. Why? Because we're going northeast. So these are my only two possibilities. Now look at this pixel right here. It looks like maybe I should turn on this pixel, right? The one which is diagonally on the top right of it. But I don't want to do it, because if you, if you do that, you're going to create something that will eventually look like a hole in the middle of the line. So I always go either right or up. And in this particular case, I can make an arbitrary choice. So I decide to go up. Then I go right, right, right. Once again, I can go either right or up. I go up and right. So uh, what I got is a pixelized approximation of the desired line. And if the resolution of the screen is sufficiently large, and if these pixels are sufficiently small, I'm going to draw something which is going to fool 
the human brain to think that what we have here is a smooth line. Okay, that's the trick that we do in vector graphics. All right, so uh, once again, draw line is implemented through a sequence of draw pixel operations, and in each stage, we have to make a very simple decision. Do we want to go right or up? That's all. And we better make this decision fast, because it turns out that this decision, or the time that it takes to compute it, holds the key to the speed of this entire algorithm. So let's look at the details. Here is uh, the line that I want to draw. And I begin by introducing some convenient notation. Instead of using uh, absolute coordinates, uh, I use uh, deltas. You know, I begin with x and y, but uh, I want to go all the way to x plus dx, y plus uh, dy, which is more convenient. And I'm going to use the following algorithm, which takes a minute or two to get used to. I will use two variables, a and b, to account for how many pixels I went to the right so far. This will be a. And how many pixels I went up so far. And this will be b. And at the beginning, a and b equals 0. And I'm going to draw, in each iteration of the, algorithm, of the algorithm, I'm going to draw x plus a and y plus b. So uh, at the beginning, I'm going to draw the xy pixel, because a and b are 0. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to decide if I want to go right or up. Now in this example here, I have to go to the right. So to go to the right, I increment a, and I don't touch b. So when I go back to the while, I'm going to draw the pixel x plus 1, y plus 0. And it's this pixel right here. And now I see that I have to go up. So I'm going to leave a intact, and b will become 1. And therefore, going back to the while loop, I'm going to draw this pixel now. So you see that in each iteration, I either increment a or b. I never increment both, because you know, we decided to avoid uh, going diagonally. So either a goes up by 1 or b goes up by 1. And so irrespective of how I'm going to snake around this line, at the end, a is going to make a distance of dx, and b is going to make a distance of by. And this gives you a clue on how we can implement the while condition. Well, basically, as long as a is less than dx and, y and, and b is less than dy, I still have work to do. I haven't reached my target yet. All right, the next thing that I want to uh, uh, delve into is this condition, going right. How do I know if I want to go right or up? Well, here is what we propose to do. Take a look at this line here and compare these two angles. dy over dx is the desired angle. That's, that's the holy grail. That's where you want to go. And b over a is what you uh, ended up doing so far. OK? So if b over a is greater than dy over dx, you want to make a correction to the right. Otherwise, you want to make a correction uh, going up. So in this particular case, you know that's the uh, condition that we get. And now we're going to go right. And we're going to draw this line again. Once again, b over a is greater than dy over dx. So once again, we want to manipulate uh, a. And we're going to make a, instead of 3, a will become 4. So uh, we get this pixel. We uh, draw this line. Now b over a is less than dy over dx. So we're going to manipulate b. And we're going to go along the y-axis. So we'll have uh, uh, this pixel. Once again, we compare the two angles, we go to the right, we compare the two angles, we go to the top, and you got the picture. And so, as you, or if you end up overshooting, you make a correction to the right. If you end up uh, undershooting, 
you make a correction up. That's the basic uh, algorithm. So it looks like uh, we're done. And yet, uh, I told you and I warned you that line drawing must be as fast as we can. And if you inspect this algorithm, and if, in particular, if you look at this condition here, then the only two words that come to my mind are oi vei, because we see that in every iteration of this algorithm, for every humble pixel that you want to draw, you have to make two divisions, which are expensive operations. And maybe if we'll use some uh, ingenious uh, tricks, we can somehow get rid of these two uh, division operations, or maybe uh, one of them. You know, let's, let's see what we can do. So uh, let's begin by looking at this condition. And we realize, using uh, elementary school algebra, that b over a greater than dy over dx is the same. It has the same truth value as a dy less than b dx. With that in mind, let us look at this expression here, a dy minus b dx. Let's call it diff. Now, obviously, this diff is going to change in every iteration, because in every iteration, we change either a or b. Now, at the beginning, diff is going to be 0, because a and b are 0. And the condition that you have here, this messy condition, can be effectively replaced by uh, the question, is it true that uh, diff is less than 0? So already, uh, we have a nice uh, uh, simplification of the algorithm. And yet, we have to maintain diff. Right? Whenever A or B change, we have uh, to change diff as well. So what is the impact of incrementing A and B on diff? Well, it turns out that it has a beautiful impact. Because when A goes up, look at, look at the definition of diff. When A goes up by 1, diff, diff goes up by dy. And when B goes up by 1, diff goes down by dx. You know, this comes out of the definition of diff. With that in mind, this entire algorithm can be reduced to what we see here. So that in every iteration, we either increment A or B, and we update diff accordingly. And the beauty of this algorithm is that it involves only addition and subtraction operations. And because it involves only addition and subtraction, Versions of this algorithm can be implemented highly efficiently on either software or hardware. And the algorithm is as good as it gets. You cannot improve it. Okay? And uh, uh, the runtime of this algorithm now depends only on the number of pixels that you have to draw. And you have to draw these pixels anyway. right? I mean, you have to draw these pixels, and therefore uh, we get uh, a beautiful algorithm which uh, uh, once again, is uh, as good as we as good as we can uh, hope for. All right, so we know how to draw lines, and uh, now that we know how to draw lines using uh, draw pixel, I want to illustrate how we're going to draw circles using lines. So here's my circle. If I'm asked to draw a circle, I should get at least uh, three inputs, which are the center of the circle, x, y, and the radius. And uh, how can I draw it? Well, uh, once again, let us remember, you know, this is not the perfect uh, pure world of geometry. This is the pixelized world, world of computer screens. So we cannot draw circles. We can only approximate the circles using uh, pixel drawing or line drawing. So in particular, you know, this uh, circle here, if we are content uh, of uh, drawing a filled circle rather than the outline, then we can draw this line, and then this line, and that line, and you know, so on and so forth. We can draw all these lines, and this will create the illusion of a filled circle. If the resolution of the screen is sufficiently small, our brain will think that what it sees is um, is a smooth uh, uh, circle. How do we do it? How, how do we uh, draw these, uh, these rows of pixels? Uh, well, uh, here's the algorithm. 
Here's the signature. You know, we want to draw a circle that uh, starts at the origin x, y, and has a, a radius of r. And uh, to get started, I, I want to draw the entire uh, diameter of the circle, and I want to characterize each one of these rows. You know, I'm going to, to draw two r, two r rows, right? I mean, we have r pixels going this way, and then another r pixel, so all together, we're going to draw two r rows. And I can characterize each one of these rows by the distance of this row from the origin. And so um, in the middle of the uh, circle, I mean, the longest row is characterized by dy equals 0 because the distance from y is 0. And then as I go up, the distance goes down because, remember, the 0, 0 origin is at the top left of the screen. That's the convention in, uh, in uh, computer graphics. So as you go up, the distance goes down until it reaches all the way to minus r. And as I go down, the distance uh, from the origin goes up until I end up with dy equals r. And uh, with that in mind, let's take a look at this uh, typical uh, pixel here. And let's try to figure out what is the coordinate of this pixel. Because if we figure out what is the coordinate of this pixel, we are done. Because the other coordinate you know, of the pixel on the other side is going to be symmetrically uh, equivalent. And then we can draw a line between these two pixels. And we can do the same thing in every uh, line along the contour of this uh, circle. So once again, the coordinates of this uh, pixel hold the key for the entire algorithm. So what are the coordinates? Well, I don't know what the x coordinate is. I call it x1. But the y coordinate must be the origin y plus dy, right? And the same is going to happen in the uh, symmetric uh, pixel on the other side of the, uh, of the circle. So we know what is y, and we still don't know what is x, but we already begin to see the logic of the algorithm. And the logic is such that for every dy going from minus r to r, we want to draw a line that goes from x1, y plus dy, to x2, y plus dy. That's the logic of the algorithm. And the only thing that remains to, uh, to be done is to figure out what x1 and x2 are. If we know x1 and x2, we can finish uh, uh, the specification of this algorithm. Now, to compute these two coordinates, what I think every one of you would do after a few seconds of reflection is you will draw you know, these uh, lines here, and you will look at these uh, two uh, uh, triangles. And you can use the Pythagorean uh, theorem to compute uh, the base of uh, each one of these uh, triangles. And now that we have the base, we are home free. You know, the base is, uh, as you see, is defined in terms of the inputs only, r, and dy is also a function of, uh, of y. So here is the coordinate of uh, this pixel. Here is the coordinate of that pixel, which is symmetrically equivalent. And all I have to do is plug these two numbers into my algorithm, and I'm done. You know, this is the algorithm for drawing uh, circles using line drawing. Uh, it may not be uh, what you have expected, but it delivers uh, the goods. It will draw a fill circle. And uh, what about drawing just the outline of the circle, which may be required? Well. Why don't you think about it yourself and uh, give yourself one or two minutes to think about this question. And when, when you have the answer or not, continue the tape. So stop the tape now. Think about it. You know, how can we modify this algorithm to draw the outline of the circle? And then run the tape again, and uh, we'll talk about the answer. All right, so the question was, Given that we know how to draw a filled circle, how do we draw uh, just the contour of the circle or the outline? Well, the answer is, instead of doing a draw line, you do two 
draw pixel operations, right? You, you draw the left pixel and the right pixel, the left pixel and the right pixel, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, and you've drawn the entire circle. <coughs> All right, so uh, this is circle drawing, and uh, we know how to draw pixels, lines, and circles, and uh, it's time for our implementation notes. So up until now, everything was very elegant and uh, nice, and from now on, we have to deal with the nitty-gritty details of uh, uh, actual implementation. So here's our draw pixel uh, algorithm. We saw it in the previous unit, and uh, notice that it has to use a pick and poke, so pick and poke are readily available in the memory class that we implemented in one of the previous units. And uh, notice also, if you look at the uh, third line from the bottom, we have to set the x modulo 16th bit of value to the current color. So how can you access an individual bit within a 16-bit value? Well, this can be done using some logical 16-bit operations. So think about it. This is something for you to ponder about, and uh, you will figure out how to set uh, individual bits in this uh, value, which is you know, one requirement uh, along the way of uh, writing a, a JEC implementation of uh, draw pixel. What about draw line? Well, uh, we have to do several modifications. First of all, this algorithm that I showed you, because I showed you this uh, graphical metaphor of going upright and so on, uh, I decided to base this metaphor on a zero, zero origin, which is at the bottom left of the screen, um, which is the intuitive mathematical way to think about it. But in reality, uh, in computer graphics, the zero, 0 is up here. It's in the top left corner of the screen. So you have to modify this algorithm uh, to account to a top left uh, uh, origin. Uh, so that's one modification. And the other modification is that recall that we made a simplifying uh, assumption. We decided to draw only lines that go northeast. In reality, we have uh, at least uh, four different uh, uh, situations, you know, we, we go either northeast or southeast or northwest or southwest. And so you have to modify, you have to, you have to somehow, you have to somehow handle every one of these four possibilities. And what about lines that go, you know, along the cross, you know, that go either vertically or exactly horizontally? Well, these lines, I think, should be handled as special cases. Because, you know, maybe, if you think about it a little bit, maybe we can handle them more efficiently than, you know, just using the same algorithm for these lines also. Think about it. So that's, that's another tweak that we can do in order to optimize uh, uh, line drawing. By the way, it's an important tweak because um, Many line drawing operations are uh, either horizontal or vertical. For example, you know, whenever you want to draw a rectangle, a square, and so on. Uh, so we want everything to, go to, to be fast, but in particular, we want popular operations to be fast. So it's, it's worth our while trying to optimize uh, drawing of uh, horizontal and vertical lines. All right, what about draw circle? Well, it turns out that this algorithm can overflow. And yet, if you set R to uh, a number which is no greater than 181, then uh, you won't run into overflow uh, problems. And uh, you know, here we draw circles. And uh, this, is, uh, this makes your uh, uh, graphics uh, package uh, hardware dependent. You know, it depends on the size of the, the hex screen. But uh, so be it. You know, every once in a while, you have to make some uh, concessions in life. And so uh, this is it. You know, that's as much as I wanted to say about uh, the screen uh, class. And uh, uh, we talked about draw pixel, uh, draw line, draw circle. The remaining uh, functions are uh, uh, simple to implement. So I trust that you will do it uh, 
using your own judgment. And uh, that's it. And uh, in the next unit, we're going to talk about textual outputs.